Morning peeps, good morning everyone. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. All right, here we go. Final thoughts and predictions. Um, boy, this isn't easy. It isn't. Um, I've watched so many videos in the last few days where people are so adamant that one fighter wins. Like, oh, Paterbiev's gonna win because he's gonna do this and Bivol's gonna win because he's gonna do that. And I'm like, how are you so confident? <laughs> like, how? Um, I've been around both of these guys now for the best part of two months. I've interviewed them a bunch of times. I've seen them all fight week. And normally I use that to kind of help my thoughts and predictions. Like, okay, I've been around them. I can kind of read the body language. I can see where I'm going and I'm going to go that guy. Nope, this hasn't helped at all. It hasn't at all. Um, you know, all the other undisputed fights we've had recently, I've been quite firm with who I thought was going to win, right? Inoue fought with Inoue. Crawford Spence Crawford. Uh, Fury Usyk Usyk. Like, I've been quite firm in them. Even the Fury Usyk one, which was, I think, a 50-50 fight. I always like, you know what, I'm getting Usyk. This one, I have been Team Bivol. Um, if you guys watch my YouTube channel back at home, you know I've got my framed Bivol top. And I've always been confident that if Bivol... I've been confident that Bivol is the only man that can beat Better be if. But that, that's been my confidence. Um, as this fight has got closer, that has waned somewhat. Just because you're around Better Biev and he's probably the most no nonsense fighter I've ever been around or ever seen in my life. Like, he doesn't get involved, he's just here for business. And his business is knocking people out and stopping them and winning and then disappearing and then coming back out again for another fight camp. He's, he's, he's saying stuff to himself as well. I don't know if you guys have seen him when he jumps on the scales, when he's doing the press conference, every time he's doing the media stuff, he's mumbling to himself. I don't know if it's a prayer, but even that just, again, adds to his demeanor. Like this guy is no nonsense. Bivol a bit more, a bit easier in terms of talking to, right? Bivol's a bit more open. Hmm. I don't know if any of that means anything when they get in the ring and fight, right? I don't know if all that means anything because ultimately skills pay the bills and both of these guys are very, very skilled in very different ways. I haven't got a clue. Honestly, I haven't got a clue. And this is why I'm so shocked when people are so adamant, like, that a fighter wins this. Like, oh, he wins this because he's... I, I'm like, how? How are you so confident? You know, I did a video the other day for a YouTube channel, Pro Boxing Fans. And I said, look, you guys know I'm Team Bivol and I want Bivol to win. Just because, you know, with me wanting Bivol to win, by the way, it's just... When you're around certain fighters, you just kind of feed off their energy. And I first met Bivol at the Canelo fight week, and I just liked his character. I liked his character, and ever since, every time I've seen him, it's been love, right? I mean, his team has showed me love as well. So because of that, you kind of got a draw to them. So I've always wanted Bivol to win. And you know what? I'm gonna go with Bivol. I'm gonna go with Bivol to get the job done. I am. I'm gonna go with the younger man to make the older man look a bit old come fight night. Um, I was watching a few of Better Beev's recent fights and he hasn't fought a mover like Bivol. And some of you will say that Bivol's not fought a puncher like Better Beev, and you are correct. But he hasn't fought a mover and in order for him, I think, to deal with the mover, he's gonna require a bit of movement as well. And as much as Better Beev is a machine, this motherfucker had knee surgery in May. Now, in a sport where you are required to use your legs, I just don't know how, like if you had knee surgery in May, <clears throat> when do you even start walking? Let alone running and training. I mean, when do you start fight camp? Like, on, I mean, these are serious questions, by the way. So I just feel like, it cannot be a 100%. Look, 
they're never all 100%, right? Sparring in age, just wear and tear your hands, but he can't be even close to 100%. He, he, he can't be. It's impossible. Um, I mean, if he is, then he really is a machine, but I just don't see how he can. And when you watch him against Callum Smith, one thing Better Be of does is he actually uses his legs a lot. Like he, he forces you to kind of fight there, there being like a triangle, and he doesn't give you any exits because his legs go that way, his legs go that way. He springs off that left hook, which if he's had knee surgery on his left knee, to kind of spring off that left hook's gonna be a problem. His right's gonna be the obviously the, the big punch for him, which is good because I, I don't I believe that, so but what I'm trying to say is that if he has had knee surgery on his left, that's an exit point for Bivol because he can't sort of he can't throw that left hook the way he would want to. I don't know, I'm not a boxing guy. I'm trying to think on the fly here. I'm getting team Bivol, man. I think Bivol's gonna win this one by unanimous decision. I think Bivol I think Bivol's feet are too good. I think Bivol's confidence all week has been through the roof. Bivol has always wanted this fight. So to an extent has better be it. But Bivol, I remember interviewing him after the Canelo fight. And I was like, what next, what next? And he was like, better be it. But I was like, oh, but the Canelo rematch is gonna pay 20 times more. He was like, no, I wanna become undisputed. I want better be it. He's been wanting and gunning for this man for years. Um, and I, I believe it stems back from their times as amateurs. I, I honestly believe it. You know, like when someone bullies you a little bit, like, you know, when you get older and bigger, you kind of want to seek them out. Like, okay, one second, you wait when I get to your size. <laughs> I almost feel like with Bibble, he's kind of seeked out Better Beer for a long time. Because Better Beer has that look of a man that kind of would put you in your place. And I just wonder if he's put Bibble in his place when they were young. And now Bivol wants a bit of retaliation, retribution. I don't know. I don't know. Guys, I, 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 aside from all the predictions, like, look, good luck to all of us trying to get this prediction right. But aside from that, it's so good to have a big fight because I, I always notice how the boxing community comes together in tweets and videos. And, um, and I've enjoyed watching it all week. Obviously, I've been out here all week. I've not done a lot of videos because <clears throat> I've been so busy. Um... But on a very personal note, um, I'm so privileged and like honored to be hosting this. Uh, honestly, we just had a meeting upstairs. Um, Andy Lee's in the meeting, Liam Smith's in the meeting, and he's a former world champion, Darren Barker, Barry Jones. And then when they're like, yeah, Ade, um, so Ade's hosting, it's just a, kind of a warm feeling went through me, like bloody hell, like what a fucking journey, like, mad honestly it's mad it's it's mental and some people i meet my friends sometimes I go for a drink or a bit of shisha and they're like bro do you not feel and i'm like fucking of course i feel weird this is strange but all of this is strange so look i can't wait for it um i think i think i'm doing the final in-ring interview so i think chris mannix is going to do because i'm obviously hosting uh so i think chris mannix is going to do all the interviews uh up until the main event and then I get in and do the final interview. And, and a selfish part of me does want Bibble to win because it would almost be like my crowning moment. One of my favorite fighters who, um, who I've got a fucking frame jersey wins and I interview him. Who knows? Who knows how this is gonna play out? All right, let me quickly, I don't have my laptop with me. It's so weird not to have my laptop. Let me quickly run through the undercard and give you my thoughts on the undercard fights. Um, let's start with the Ben Whitaker, Liam Cameron one. I think Whitaker's gonna light him up. I really do. I think Liam Cameron's tough, but I think Liam Cameron's style, that kind of come forward style, I think is gonna play into Ben's hands. I think Ben might struggle with in years to come when a fighter is a counter puncher and stays off him and then Ben's gotta instigate everything. When a fighter's coming on to Ben Whitaker, I think that's when you start to see the angles and the brilliance and those kind of showboating punches. So I expect Ben Whitaker to win this one it might go points, you know. It might go points. Liam's tough, and I'm still not sure about Ben's power. Um, but if Ben does have power, I expect Ben to get rid of him late, very late, because Liam, I think, will um, show how tough he is. He's been through a lot 
in his life. And I do think that hardens you. So I expect Liam to kind of be in there for a long time. Uh, Sky Nicholson, Raven Chapman. Sky has made this pro game look very, very easy so far. I think this is when it starts to look a bit hard. Um, I expect her to win because I think Sky is a brilliant boxer. But I think Raven is physically stronger and is going to put it on her. Um, Sky's spoken about Raven's feet and Raven's spoken about Sky's feet. It's interesting in terms of their movement. Um, I think Raven alluded to the fact that every time Sky fights someone, they come in straight lines. Raven's expecting or hoping to be able to come in in different angles and cause Sky some problems. I think she will. But like Sky, I think will win this one um, going away. Um, it's a 10-rounder. I don't know, 7-3 or something. Um, Chris Eubank Jr. versus Camille Zaramata. Chris has to stop him. Has to stop him. I'm sorry. That's the only outcome that is acceptable for me. And uh, people might say, oh, one second, Ali, calm down. He's been out the ring 30 months. I know, I know. But they pick this opponent. When you, when you are the A-side and you pick an opponent, I'm sorry, you're picking him to do a job on him. Anything other than doing a job on him is, it, it shouldn't be accepted just because you're picking the opponent. Camille Zaramata had retired. He's a retired fighter that's come back for this one. Um, and not only that, but I think Chris, for the names that we want to see next, um, obviously he wants Conor Ben, but I'm talking about the names that I, as and maybe you guys as fight fans want to see next. We need to see Chris look destructive so we can get excited about those bigger names. I really, really want to see Chris go for a legit world title fight um, against Alan Canali or Carlos Adames. I'm not too interested in Eris Landy Lara, but any of those two I'll take, if not Hamza Shiraz. So I think Chris will look good. I think Chris is going to get a stoppage, maybe early. Um, Frank Warren's put 50 grand on Camille Zaramata, by the way. I said, no, not put 50 grand on him. It said to Camille, if you stop Chris, here's an extra 50 grand. <laughs> So that's going to be interesting. Um, what next? Jar Pattaya versus Jack Massey. You know what, yeah? When this fight was first announced, hands up, I said, oh, Jai destroys him. I don't think he does. I really don't think he does destroy him at all. In fact, if there is a banana skin, like one of the big favourites expected to win, I think this is one where it could go the other way. I, I expect Jai to win, but I I'm not ruling out Jack, you know. Jack's a very, very big cruiserweight. Um, can absorb a lot of shots. You know, the thing is about Jai, we will look at Jai as a puncher at, because of the Jordan Thompson, because of the, because of the Ellis Sorrow. Jai is fundamentals, and what Jai is known for is actually just being a very skilled boxer. Um, so I think Jai is going to get back to that um, because I think he probably knows that Jack can absorb a lot of shots as well. I mean, Jack took Joseph Parker's best shots. Took Joseph Parker's best shots and didn't budge. So I'm going for Jai to win, but I think it's going to be tight. I think it's going to be tight. Um, look, if Jai wants to send out a message to the rest of the cruiserweights and, and potentially the bridger and heavyweight division, then I think he needs a stoppage. But I think it's going to be very, very close. So I'm going Jai to win. Like, something like 116, 112. I think it's going to be close. 117, 111 max. All right, um, co-main event. Good luck in picking this one. This is, to me, this is as tough a pick, and I said this on the broadcast yesterday, this is as tough a pick as the main event. Honestly, I think both guys looked in great shape. Uh, fucking, uh, Fraser's got 30 pounds on uh, Fabio. 241 to 271, that's a lot of weight. Um, I think Fraser's is going to start a bit faster. I think he now believes and trusts in his gas tank. If you've never done a 12-rounder before, you're going to be a bit apprehensive about literally unloading everything in the first few rounds. So I almost thought like he started quite slow because he wasn't quite sure about the gas tank. Now he knows he can go 12. I think that will give him confidence to maybe throw a bit more in the earlier rounds, try and bank those rounds, and then we'll see what happens. I think Fabio is going to go for the kill. I think Fabio's going to go for the kill early and try and knock out Fraser. Um, honestly, I don't think I've ever done this on this channel. I'm fencing on this one. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. Gun to the head. They don't got a clue. Fucking hell. That means I'm dead. <laughs> and now, gun to the head. I'm going to go...
mate. <laughs> I ain't got a clue. I honestly have no clue who wins this fight. Uh, Fabio. Fabio, Fabio. All right, guys, girls, uh, we obviously do a rap video tomorrow, but wish me luck. Um, and thank you for all your support. I see all the messages, whether it be on my Instagram, on Twitter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It means a lot. And um, I can't wait for this one. I really can't. Peace.